So previously, I had done a video about the effect of estrone, the estrone problem, I think I called it, on uh, feminizing therapy. Essentially, uh, what I had said was something to the effect of, uh, you know, there's estradiol, estrone, estriol. There's all these different types of estrogens. Estriol is kind of like a very minuscule uh, estrogen hormone and seems to be a little bit more important in those who are pregnant. So we don't really worry about it so much in trans medicine. Uh, but we do tend to focus a lot on estradiol and um, not a lot of people focus on estrone um, except for like us at this clinic and a few others out there. Uh, Dr. William Powers up in Michigan uh, had, you know, made some statements about it as well. Although I think uh, that uh, I've seen on his Reddit recently that even he has kind of uh, come around uh, to kind of a different way of thinking about the, uh, the issue with estrone. Uh, so anyways, so to get into it, essentially what, uh, what I had said was that estrone was a weaker estrogen and that it could get out of control, just kind of have a super high level, especially for those on pills, uh, because of the way that it's processed in the body, it tends to, you know, the body just converts some into estrone and keeps some as estradiol. I mean, that's the way hormones work. They tend to like to convert. Uh, into others very frustratingly uh, but anyways so when they do that to a great degree then it would seem like you know estrogen gets out of control and um, you know we wonder what kind of affinity uh, or attraction that estrone has to estrogen receptors because estrogen receptors aren't too terribly particular um, about what estrogen attaches to them be it estradiol or estrone um, but it does kind of depend on what the affinity or the strength of the attraction is between them. Um, anyways, so previously I thought that if you had a whole bunch of estrone that it would kind of crowd out um, estradiol and prevent it from doing its work. Uh, I had uh, somewhat recently, not the study I'm going to kind of go briefly over here, but I've also seen some other information that made me question exactly how much affinity estrone has for those estrogen receptors. I used to think it was a very high affinity to where it would knock uh, estradiol out of the park and it wouldn't be able to do its thing so that, you know, we're kind of losing out on estradiol's effect. Um, but I've seen some stuff recently that while it's, you know, small trials and everything, I, it kind of made me question, okay, maybe that's not exactly what happens, uh, that it's getting, that estrone is crowding out estradiol. Uh, but that perhaps it is something else, maybe perhaps to do with the ratio between the two, uh, estradiol and estrone, or, you know, the total amount of estrone, uh, it's kind of up in the air. What I do know is that I do have some patients that whenever they get a sky high estrone level, sometimes they stall out with their transition effects. But I have also seen plenty a long the time now uh, that I've been in practice that have a sky high estrone level and they are transitioning just fine. Um, these are all things that I hope in time I'll actually have time to go back and put into studies and publish but right now working the clinic and also working in the hospital I have literally no time. Uh, so anyway so that's kind of made me rethink uh, how estrone is a problem and uh, and then also this uh, this study that just was uh, released in October of last year uh, came across my desk uh, today, actually, and I wanted to put this out there. I'm going to put a link to it in the uh, little description section uh, as well. And uh, anyway, essentially, this uh, in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and uh, Metabolism uh, had this study called The Role of Estrone in Feminizing Hormone Treatment. So finally, you know, everybody's looking at it like, wow, okay, nobody really has looked very directly at, uh, at this. And so it was very exciting to see this, you know, title. Um, now, going over the study, I mean, essentially, the study goes for, I think, let me see, I'm on the website now looking at it. Uh, I think it was just for a very brief amount of time, like a year or so. And um, it was on a relatively small amount of people, I believe, let's see, 20, what is it, 23 in one group and like, oh, shoot, man, I wish I would have pulled it up. Anyways, I mean, you can look at it whenever you go in, but it was like 
some like 23 people in one group and 50 something in another group. Um, and essentially what they were looking at was the percentage of fat changes in the body um, and also breast development over, you know, that year course of time or so. Um, let's see. And, oh, no, it says maybe it's about one year, two year, whatever. Anyway, uh, prospective cohort study with follow-up of one year. It, uh, anywho. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to read it and tell you at the same time because I literally just saw this today and I thought it was very interesting and wanted to put it out. Um, so, anyways, what the study concluded was that it didn't really seem to make that much of a statistical difference um, in the amount of fat percentage of a person's body who is transitioning feminine or breast development wise in a person transitioning feminine, uh, which is very interesting because um, prior to this, you know, we, uh, well, some of us anyway are supposing that estrone does have a part to play in such, you know, early breast development. And um, it kind of makes you wonder, okay, is there some point that we need to be looking at otherwise. Um, like I said, this was a very small study uh, of the people that actually followed through with the study. You know, they start off with so many people and then they have uh, X amount that actually follow through with getting all the testing and stuff done. So, I mean, relatively small number uh, of what ended up. And then another thing is that, you know, it says that the they used an anti-androgen uh, Ciproterone acetate, which is not available here in the United States. Um, and so, you know, they didn't have a lot, a control group of some folks without that. So did that affect how much fat or breast development or whatever uh, occurred? Not really, uh, not really sure. So anyways, uh, essentially, the study is claiming, you know, that more research needs to be done on this, of course, because it was a small study, but preliminary uh, findings look like uh, estrone levels may not really have much to do with body fat percentage change and or uh, breast development, which is very interesting to me. And it's somewhat confirming some thoughts I've had as I've been going along in trans medicine practice. Uh, just things that I have seen. I know those are anecdotal, but hey, you know, um, <laughs> anecdotal evidence is where real evidence gets started so that we know, hey, this looks like something that needs to be researched. So it was very interesting seeing that and also the previous uh, research that I had seen, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago um, that I mentioned in the beginning of the video about the whole um, affinity for the estrogen receptors. Now, all hormones have a purpose in the body. I don't think that, you know, estrone is just trash and we throw it out and don't look at it. I certainly think that uh, keeping an eye on estro uh, estrone levels is a good thing uh, because some people do get astronomically high estrone levels and it's just not really a physiologically, you know, quote unquote normal thing that you see um, in other folks. So, and you know, we stupidly or intelligently base a lot of our uh, medication regimens and things off of things that we see in cisgender studies on cisgender women. And um, we just don't tend to see estrone levels as high as they can get in trans women when they're on oral uh, pill estradiol therapy. And so that probably could be something that uh, needs to be attended to. And um, anywho, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, wanted to put that out there because I know that um, both myself, Dr. Powers, a couple other people out there uh, have been online in videos before, um, you know, talking about estrone and how it could be a potential problem. But again, science is ever changing and evolving as we get new uh, information and everything. And while this doesn't completely refute everything, you know, that I have been doing, because I definitely do see some people encounter issues here and there um, who have elevated estrone levels. And I do wonder at, you know, if you have those kind of elevated levels, you know, still is estrone connected more to the inflammatory processes that cause, you know, things like clots and stuff that people are traditionally worried about with estrogen therapy. So I do still think, like I said, that it 
it warrants watching, but perhaps it's not as big an issue as we were once thinking. Like maybe it does warrant watching because it could increase your risk factors, you know, your risk for clots and things, but maybe it's not such a hindrance in most people's transition as we once thought. Um, jury is still out on that. Uh, I'd be really interested if anyone has any uh, additional stuff they could throw at me to, uh, to look at. That would be great. Like I said, this one just came across my desk today and I was like, oh, I need to do a video on that because, you know, this is, you know, not in complete opposition, but it really does, you know, shed some light on, potentially shed some light, that is, because remember, it's all, you know, small studies and everything and, you know, needs more work, but still interesting stuff. Uh, if you have anything, please link it uh, so I can look it up, you know, I mean... Again, working two jobs, don't have a whole lot of time right now uh, to focus on stuff. And I know people have asked before, you know, they want sources and things to provide to their medical providers. And I do apologize um, that we don't often do that because these are done for more just bringing awareness to trans medicine issues and being a conversation starting point and food for thought. So, you know, we don't want these to be taken as scholarly discussions. I mean these more for fun and to get people talking and thinking than anything else. But this was in particular a piece of research that I did want to throw out there um, just so that people can look it over themselves and, uh, and kind of, you know, make up their minds and, uh, you know, Hopefully, if there's someone out there who's doing some doctoral studies, maybe they could pick up the slack here and jump on the train and, and help get some of this other stuff done, you know? It would be really great to see a continuation of this and, uh, and, and have more data growing. And hopefully, I'll be able to add to that in the future. But um, not right now while I'm working two jobs and in the middle of a pandemic. So, huh, what are you going to do? Anyways, it was fun talking to y'all. I'm sorry that I rambled. I was just kind of excited about this new research that came across. Um, I, I'm thinking about taking down that other video since, uh, about the estrone problem, just because this kind of calls it into question and I don't want people to watch it. Uh, and and potentially get confused if they just watch that video or they don't see this one or something. Um, so anyways, yeah, I think I will. I'm going to just at least put it on, you know, block for now or something so that people don't stumble across it and then not see this updated video. Um, so anyways, um, y'all have fun. Let me know if you have any other cool research or something for me to read and um, keep writing in with your questions. See you laters.